The Ding family massacre of 2011 is one of the most tragic and brutal murder cases I have ever covered. It sparked a 14 month long manhunt for Ang Zhang Du who became the UK's most wanted man. First on the board tonight is Ang Zhang Du. He is one of Britain's most wanted men and yet the trail has gone cold. Chinese businessman Ang Zhang Du wiped out the family after a business relationship with Mr. Ding turned sour. Ang Zhang Du showed no mercy, stabbing the family a total of 51 times. He traveled to Northampton armed with a knife and murdered a family of four. This is the story of Ang Zhang Du and the Ding family. You are now listening to British Brothers, the True Crime Podcast. Hello everyone and welcome to British Murders, the podcast that focuses exclusively on British murder cases and serial killers. I'm your host Stuart Blues and this is the fifth episode of season eight. This week's case was suggested by a YouTube commenter called Mr, no first or surname given. We're in the East Midlands town of Northampton this week, a place we have visited before on British Murders. The third episode of my third season covered Philip Austin and the Northampton family massacre and coincidentally this week's case also involves a family massacre. Before we get into the story, let me quickly advise you that this podcast contains elements that may be alarming to some listeners. As always, listener discretion is advised. Our villain this week is a Chinese national named Ang Zhang Du, who lived in the West Midlands city of Coventry during the events of this story. Apologies in advance, by the way, for any mispronunciations of the names of people involved in this week's case. As is often the case, I can't offer you much background information regarding our villain, so we may as well begin our timeline in the 1990s. Ang Zhan and his wife Kan Chen set up a business during that decade focusing on offering customers traditional Chinese herbal remedies and medicines. Their shop front was located in the neighbouring city of Birmingham. The business was set up with another Chinese couple who had recently arrived in the UK. Shifeng Ding and Gei Chu were their names, but they were more commonly known as Jeff and Helen, respectively. After arriving in the UK in what must have been the early 90s, the Dings soon brought two children into the world, both of whom were girls. Zing, who sometimes went by the name Nancy, was born in roughly 1993, whilst her younger sister Alice was born in roughly 1999. The Ding family lived at 10 Pioneer Close, a detached house in Wooten, Northampton. An interesting tidbit about where the Dings lived is that it used to be the location of a former Royal Pioneer Corps barracks called Simpson Barracks. The original name was actually Quebec Barracks. All of the streets in that area use military themed names, Battalion Drive, Regiment Close, Sentry Close and Militia Close are a few examples. The Ding family were known to their neighbours as a warm and friendly family who had a close bond with one another. Jeff was a university lecturer at Manchester Metropolitan University, whilst Helen was a translator. Another source said she worked in a local school, so I can't say for sure what her job was outside of the joint venture with the Doos. When Jeff and Helen went into business with Ang Zhang and Chan, it started out great, as most ventures do. After a few years though, a sour relationship developed between the two families. I looked everywhere to find out what the underlying issues were with the breakdown of their business relationship, but I found nothing. What I can tell you is that beginning in 1999, a decade long legal battle would ensue that would eventually lead to one of the most tragic murder cases I've ever covered. The nasty legal action saw both families inside a courtroom on numerous occasions throughout those 10 years and it may surprise you to hear that Ang Zhang won the first litigation battle. It was a short lived victory though, as Ang Zhang would ultimately be the one who was forced by the courts to pay the price. That price was £88,000, which looks set to cripple Ang Zhang financially and ruin what was left of his beloved business. Before I get into the main timeline of events, let me tell you a little bit about Zing and Alice Ding, the two daughters of Jeff and Helen. In 2011, the year in which our events this week took place, 18-year-old Zing Ding had reportedly applied to the University of Nottingham and had been accepted. She had a place waiting for her on the university's medicine course set to begin that autumn, subject to her A-level results of course. A hard-working student, Zing excelled at Northampton High School, an independent or private school, and chose chemistry, classic Latin, mathematics and biology as her A-level subjects. 
Zing was also an exceptionally talented musician, as was her little sister, 12-year-old Alice. Alice was a year 7 pupil at the back end of her first year of high school during the events of this story. She attended Caroline Chisholm School in Wooten, which has academy status. Back in 2011, Alice's head of form was Joe Rich, who has since gone on to become the school's faculty leader for PE. Joe said the following about Alice's time at Caroline Chisholm. She was incredibly hard working. Staff who were here with Alice will look for those qualities in students now. The school's vice principal, Catherine Patterson, said, Alice loved life and was very popular with everyone. She was just a delightful student. The two girls had clearly been raised well by their parents and had incredibly bright futures ahead of them. Unfortunately, because of the actions of one revengeful man, both were denied the chance. One could only wonder what Zing and Alice would have gone on to achieve in their respective lives. I don't doubt they'd have made their parents even prouder than they already were. The tragic chain of events is thought to have been instigated when Ang Zhang Du received a letter through the post on April 28th, 2011. The letter's contents were of a legal nature, and it wasn't good news for Ang Zhang. An injunction had been sent to his home to prevent the businessman from dissipating his assets. Embarrassed and frustrated by the outcome of the decade-long legal battle with the Ding family, Ang Zhang made a plan to exact his revenge. The following day, Friday, April 29th, 2011, was supposed to be a joyous day for everyone in the UK. It was the highly anticipated wedding day of Prince William and Catherine Middleton at London's Westminster Abbey. A public holiday was declared by then Prime Minister David Cameron, which meant that all schools and most businesses were closed. Had there been no public holiday the day after Ang Zhang received the injunction, say the royals got married on another day, perhaps he wouldn't have been able to carry out his massacre of the Ding family. The kids would have been in school for one, and Jeff and Helen would have been at work rather than at home. Sadly, that wasn't the case, so let's run through the timeline. At 10.44am on April 29th, 2011, Ang Zhang Du boarded a train at Coventry Station and headed for Birmingham. It's around a half hour train journey. Once in the UK's second city, Ang Zhang headed for his medicine shop, where he remained for 10 minutes. The shop was closed due to the aforementioned public holiday. The purpose of visiting his shop was to leave what has been described as a farewell note to his wife, Kan Chen. The term farewell note is used there rather than side note because Ang Zhang had no plans to take his own life. He intended to go on the run after committing the atrocities he had planned. With the letter written, Ang Zhang Du grabbed a kitchen knife and locked up. He then returned to the train station and waited until the next train to Northampton arrived. The train to Northampton will have taken around an hour, which meant that Ang Zhang arrived in the town shortly after 12.30pm. Once there, Ang Zhang headed for the bus station and waited for the number 14 bus to Wooten, which he boarded at 1.07pm. As the bus approached Ang Zhang's stop at 1.25pm, CCTV footage shows him asking the bus driver for directions before disembarking. He reportedly asked the driver the way to Pioneer Close, the cul-de-sac on which the home of the Ding family stood. His entire journey from Coventry to Northampton was caught on CCTV. As Ang Zhang made his way to Pioneer Close on foot, a passerby testified that he asked him for directions to ensure he was headed in the right direction. A short while later, Ang Zhang arrived at 10 Pioneer Close and knocked on the door. The precise chain of events is not 100% known, but it is alleged that Ang Zhang demanded money from Jeff and Helen, and after he was refused, the killer withdrew his weapon, a kitchen knife, and stabbed his former business partners to death in their kitchen. The timing of the killings is uncertain because there's a two-hour window in which it could have occurred. However, we know that at 3.32pm, Zing made a phone call to the police using Alice's phone in a desperate plea for help after hearing screams coming from downstairs. The girls were in an upstairs bedroom whilst Ang Zhang was killing their parents in the kitchen. The call isn't available to listen to, thank God, but the girls were reportedly screaming in terror throughout. Hearing the call back in court would reduce each member of the jury to tears. Not long after the call was made, it ended. An operator was not given the chance to answer before the call was terminated, so it was logged as an abandoned call. Having killed Jeff and Helen, Ang Zhang went upstairs to where the two girls were. He proceeded to murder them in the same manner he had their parents moments earlier, using the same weapon. In total, the four members of the Ding family were stabbed 51 times, as confirmed by their postmortems. Jeff was stabbed 23 times, Helen 13, Zing, 11, and Alice, 4. Regarding that abandoned phone call I just mentioned, a subsequent investigation into the murders of the Ding family by the Independent Police Complaints Commission concluded that not enough was done to help find the location the call was made from. It was labelled as being mishandled. 
Essentially, a BT operator attempted to trace the caller's location and forwarded their findings to the police. Unfortunately, the location provided was Collingtree Park, two miles southwest of the murder scene at Pioneer Close. Police officers responded to the incident by visiting the address at Collingtree Park, but dismissed the call as an attempt at wasting police time. After their uneventful visit, the incident was closed. The officers had no idea of the brutality that had just taken place up the road. Back at Pioneer Close, Ang Zhang Du decided to take a nap after murdering Jeff and his family. He took said nap in the very house he'd just committed four murders in. As the daylight hours faded, Ang Zhang was preparing to put the next stage of his plan into action. Exiting 10 Pioneer Close, he let himself into the Ding family's 2010 silver Vauxhall Corsa and headed for the M1. At the Road Chef Northampton services on Junction 15A, Ang Zhang bought himself a map of Northamptonshire and treated himself to a banana milkshake. He bought the map to help him find another one of his former business associates, Paul Delaney. Thankfully, Paul wasn't at home when Ang Zhang pulled up, which without question, saved his life. Not wanting to hang around and wait for Paul, Ang Zhang decided to head for London, a journey that would have taken him around an hour and a half. The trip was made in the late hours of April 29th, so traffic won't have been too bad. Once in the nation's capital, Ang Zhang dumped the Ding family's car on Venable Street in the Lisson Grove district of St. John's Wood in Westminster. He was caught on CCTV just before 2.30am on April 30th, 2011, as he walked away from the abandoned vehicle. Bizarrely, the Vauxhall Corsa's license plate was not detected once after entering London, despite the high volume of ANPR cameras in the city. That set the police investigation back a good while when the Ding family's bodies were later discovered. Near five hours after abandoning the Corsa, Ang Zhang Du purchased a one-way coach ticket. His intended destination was Paris, France. Ang Zhang used his own passport to make the purchase and paid the £61 fee in cash. It was later that day, on April 30th, that Kan Chen, Ang Zhang's wife, reported him missing to the police. Ang Zhang's farewell note had been found by his wife, hence the call. Now knowing of the Du's connection with the Dings, police visited 10 Pioneer Close at 8am on May 1st, 2011, but left a short while later after their knocks didn't gain a response. The officers had no idea that the massacred bodies of Jeff, Helen, Zing and Alice were inside the house, mere metres from where they stood. By 6pm that evening, Jason Horsley, one of the Ding's neighbours from over the road, had grown sufficiently concerned about their lack of showing their faces over the weekend that he decided to check up on them. Here's what Jason said. I rang the doorbell and they didn't answer. I called out their names. No response. I unbolted the gate and looked in the kitchen window. I could see like a brown gunk on the floor. At first I thought a radiator had probably fallen off the wall. But then I looked harder and noticed what looked like a leg. I ran straight back home and called the police. The locked front door was soon smashed open by the officers that arrived at the scene, and what awaited them inside is a sight I'm sure will haunt them for the rest of their lives. As one of the officers headed for the kitchen and found the two bodies of Jeff and Helen, another officer made his way upstairs, where he found the bodies of Zing and Alice. Meanwhile, Ang Zhang Du had arrived in Paris, but France wasn't his final destination. He continued to travel across Europe by way of public transport until he finally arrived in the city of Tangier in northwestern Morocco. He arrived there on a ferry from Algeciras in Spain. By May 4th, 2011, Ang Zhang Du was publicly named as a wanted man and the chief suspect in the Ding family murder case by Northamptonshire police. Despite seizing over 5,000 hours of CCTV footage, putting out alerts in 180 countries, questioning over 2,000 people and offering a £25,000 reward for information leading to Ang Zhang Du's capture, Northamptonshire police were at a loss as to where their key suspect was. Almost 400 alleged sightings of Ang Zhang were investigated, but they each led to nothing. Over in northeast Morocco, Ang Zhang Du was arrested in the city of Oujdar, near the Algerian border. The arrest had nothing to do with the murder of the Ding family, though. Ang Zhang was suspected of being an illegal immigrant, but was then let go after providing false identity information. The Moroccan authorities had no idea he was wanted on suspicion of four murders in the UK. On May 10th, 2011, the Vauxhall Corsa belonging to the Ding family was finally discovered, 10 days after it was abandoned. On the windscreen of the car were nine separate parking tickets. An episode of Crime Watch aired on May 24th, 2011, during which an appeal was put out for information about the capture of Ang Zhang Du. He was listed as the UK's number one most wanted person. A day later, on May 25th, 2011, independent UK charity Crime Stoppers offered a reward of their own in the amount of £10,000 for information resulting in the arrest and charge of Ang Zhang Du. 
As with the police's reward offer, nothing came of it. Ang Zhang Du would not be caught until July 7th, 2012, just over 14 months after murdering the Ding family. By then, working as a night watchman on a building site in Tangier, Morocco, one of Ang Zhang's co-workers saw a photograph of the murderer in a newspaper and informed the local police immediately. Ang Zhang Du was then arrested by Moroccan police and taken into custody. Upon being made aware of the arrest, UK police officers began the process of formally extraditing Ang Zhang to the UK to be tried for his crimes. Some other individuals were arrested whilst the necessary paperwork was being completed, including two men in their mid-twenties and a woman in her late thirties, but all three were soon released on bail. They were brought in for questioning on suspicion of harbouring Ang Zhang, but as far as I can tell, no charges were made against them. Seven months after his arrest in Morocco, Ang Zhang Du finally arrived back in the UK. The Moroccan Ministry of Justice had approved his extradition in conjunction with the Home Office. After several delayed hearings, Ang Zhang finally got the chance to plead to his four murder charges via a Mandarin interpreter. You probably won't be surprised to hear that he denied murder on all four counts and instead tried, and failed, to plead guilty to manslaughter by diminished responsibility. His murder trial began at Northampton Crown Court on November 13th, 2013 and lasted two weeks. The jury of eight women and four men retired on November 26th, 2013 and returned at midday the following day, November 27th. They unanimously found Ang Zhang Du guilty of all four murders. On November 28th, 2013, sentencing judge Mr. Justice Flo handed him a life sentence with a minimum term of 40 years. The then 54-year-old will be 94 when he is eligible to apply for parole. In his closing statement, Mr. Justice Flo said, These were cold-blooded murders which, in my judgment, were premeditated and were considered acts of revenge in which you wiped out the entire family of the couple whom you considered had ruined you financially. I am quite satisfied it was that hatred and anger and the desire for revenge they generated that motivated you to act as you did. By the time you left the shop in Birmingham that morning, at the latest, you had already formulated a plan to go to Northampton to kill the Ding family with the knife and then to flee the jurisdiction. Helen's family flew to the UK from China to attend the trial and made a public statement via an interpreter after sentencing, in which they expressed that they were happy with the sentence. They said they felt justice had been served. In June 2014, Ang Zhang Du attempted to appeal his conviction, but three judges at the Court of Appeal ruled that his life sentence was not excessive. The judges collectively said, in our judgment, it is simply unarguable that the judge's assessment of 40 years is either wrong in principle or manifestly excessive. At Caroline Chisholm School, numerous yellow daffodils were planted in memory of Alice Ding. Yellow was her favourite colour. The daffodils not only celebrate the life of Alice, but they also represent her hard work and talent, something which lit up the school during her short time there. A memorial is also located on the school grounds near the daffodils with a plaque that reads, in loving memory of the Ding family, shine bright, Alice. And that was the story of murderer Ang Zhang Du. Thanks again, mister, for suggesting that case. I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. Please continue emailing case suggestions to britishmurderspodcast at gmail.com or message me via social media. You'll not only get the episode covered, but you'll get a cheeky shout out too. That's it for another episode. I've been Stuart Blues. This has been British Murders. Thanks so much for listening. Until next time, cheerio.